let me say this to you. I think I meet a lot of entrepreneurs and now I speak to a fair number of entrepreneurs, which is a tremendous honor. And one of the things that I've learned is that the most difficult thing in the world is to move that train one foot out of the station. 99.9% .9 of the population has an idea that's doing in their head right now and their train is firmly in the station. And it's the very, very small percentage of them who can move just ever so slightly. And once you get that first little bit of motion, the rest of it is momentum that's surprisingly easy to accomplish. But ideas in and of themselves really aren't that valuable. It's the ability to take that idea and, and turn that into something meaningful and turn that into a product that you know, ultimately people want to buy, uh, whether it's companies or individuals. That's really the magic of entrepreneurship. And so what I tell everybody, what I told a group of gay uh, aspiring entrepreneurs, um, MBA students, just this past week in Atlanta, what I tell everybody is that first foot. Whatever is holding you back from moving your idea forward, set it aside. Do it. Do something. Take it, product, you know, do a demo of your product, build a prototype of your product, mock it up, um, do it, try it. You know, there's no downside to doing that first step. My role model is my mom, who is a crazy serial entrepreneur. Um, my mom, you know, is, is literally the best salesperson I've ever met in my whole life, and I've had the privilege of working with some astonishing salespeople. And, you know, from a very early age, my mom had these side businesses, um, which eventually became her principal, um, you know, form of income and, and effort. And, you know, she was never happier than when she, you know, had her little company selling uh, fancy imported food or uh, cookware, which were the two businesses for which she's, um, you know, probably best known. And, you know, from a very early age, I used to sell with her. Uh, from around the age of 10, we'd go to these markets uh, around uh, Toronto, which is the city where I grew up. And, you know, it wasn't necessarily the most fun thing process-wise because it was a 4 a.m. start on a Saturday morning. And we'd get into the truck and we'd load it up and we'd drive out, um, you know, to wherever the market was being held. And we'd set up our booth and then I would, you know, not the whole day because I was an excitable young kid, but I'd spend a big chunk of my day in the booth selling jam or cookware or whatever it was that we were working on. And, um, you know, just watching my mom sell. And uh, that was the inspiration, you know, probably for everything that I've done, which is it's that moment where you get out of bed and you get up in front of people and you say, this is my uh, heart on a plate and would you like to buy it, um, is the moment that you, you know, can move forward and the moment that you can accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. I think you have lots of moments of tremendous uh, elation and tremendous disappointment when you're an entrepreneur. I think every single day is a roller coaster, and in fact, uh, I don't think there's a day that goes by that I don't hit some new high and I don't hit some new low. You know, you wake up and think, what am I doing? What did I do with all my money? What am I doing with all these other people's money? What am I doing with all my staff's time? Like, this is crazy. We're never going to get there. And then, you know, like today, I spoke on the phone to one of our top customers. I I actually personally call each one of our top customers on a sort of rolling basis because I, I believe in talking to them and finding out what they're about. And, you know, it was a, it was like Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa rolled into one experience. I mean, he was talking my ear off about how much he loved Beamy and how much it had changed his workflow and how, you know, it was meaningful and ours was one of the best products he'd ever used in his whole life. I mean, what's better than that? But similarly, when someone writes a bad, annoying a review of our applications in the App Store, I'm on the far opposite end of the scale. So every day is a roller coaster, and probably the uh, most meaningful advice that I can give about the actual process of running a company is that you have to be ready for that. And um, being the CEO of a startup really is probably the worst job in the whole world, as far as I can tell. Because, uh, you know, CEO of your own startup, you're everybody's bitch. You are your employee's bitch, you are your investor's bitch, you are your customer's bitch, pardon the expression. The reality is that you, um, you're absolutely positively moved by what all those people do. You are here to turn this great creaking ship in the direction that you want to turn it in. And you don't get to fly off the handle and decide what you want to do and go to Aspen like everybody assumes you do, like CEOs of public companies do. CEOs of startups cannot act like that. I just, I can't say what's on my mind. If I said what was on my mind all the time, I'd have no employees, investors, or customers, right? So it's, there's a lot of like grin and bear it. And in that process, you develop a unique skill set to filter what's important and what's not, and to be able to, you know, stay focused on the big picture prize. 
And despite the fact that being an entrepreneur is one of the worst jobs in the whole entire world, I can't imagine doing anything else. Thank you.